And thanks, Airflow Summit. Thank you, everyone, for attending. As Leah mentioned, my name is Nick Acosta, and I'm a developer advocate here at Fivetran, where we've built the Fivetran Airflow Provider. Uh, so I'm going to take this session to introduce the Fivetran Airflow Provider, uh, share some ways that I found of organizations uh, use it and uh, use Fivetran and Airflow together. I'm going to show a quick demonstration of the Fivetran Airflow Provider, uh, give you an opportunity uh, to try it out yourself to orchestrate ELT with both Fivetran and Airflow. So an agenda for today, I'm going to start with a case study of a specific organization that I think is using Fivetran and Airflow together in a really unique, a really simple and effective way uh, before getting into a little bit more detail of what Fivetran is. Then I'm going to introduce a Fivetran Airflow provider and show a demonstration of it. And, and as I mentioned, give you all an opportunity to try this out yourself. So let's start with that case study. So this is a case study that's gonna be up on Fivetran.com here very shortly. I wanted to give you all here at Airflow Summit a quick preview uh, of what this is, uh, the data infrastructure for a financial services organization. And uh, for the purposes of this case study, just know that Fivetran is performing automated data ingestion. I'll get into more of what's going on here at Fivetran uh, in some upcoming slides. But as you can see from their architecture diagram, they have a number of different sources where that are generating data and they utilize Fivetran to automate the movement of that data into a centralized location uh, in this financial services organization's case, that's Snowflake. So they're bringing in data from seven different sources that you can see on my screen. Some you may recognize like uh, Salesforce and Google Analytics. And for six of these seven sources, they're just using Fivetran as is, running them out of Fivetran.com without any sort of uh, unique setup or customization uh, but for one of their data sources, they're bringing it into Snowflake uh, by orchestrating those five trend jobs in Airflow. Uh, and not just one or, uh, data source, but their production database, they're replicating that in their data warehouse. It's their largest data source, the most data that they're pushing into Snowflake. And uh, I would argue maybe, you know, their their most important you know, data source of these. So. Uh, in Airflow, they're using Fivetran operators, and we'll talk about the Fivetran provider. They're using DBT operators as well. So DBT enables you to perform data transformations uh, in SQL. You can see that Fivetran is bringing in data as raw source data uh, from these various uh, different sources. They're using DBT to transform and model that data into something that is easy to run analytics off of including utilizing Fivetran DBT packages. So we have some analysts here at Fivetran that contribute uh, packages that you can just use out of the box to model your data uh, to DBT. This financial service company uses Snowflake as well as Snowflake operators uh, in their Airflow environment. So why just orchestrate one of these seven sources um, in Airflow? In, not just one, but you know the biggest the, the biggest source that they're pushing to their warehouse. Uh, in a word, uh, the reason why they're doing that is because of cost. So as a developer advocate here at Fivetran, I'm not an expert in cost. I'm not an expert in cost pricing for Fivetran and certainly not for uh, data warehouses and data lakes. Uh, but I can say generally that Fivetran pricing is independent of data seek frequency, like how, fr how frequently you're calling Fivetran uh, Fivetran has a consumption-based pricing model uh, where you're charged depending on how much data moves through Fivetran, not how frequently you're calling a Fivetran job. But there are some data warehouses where their pricing is dependent of data fre sync frequency. So if you think of data warehouses, especially ones that decouple storage and compute and decouple the pricing for each of them, the storage is gonna be independent of how many times you're calling Fivetran. It's just gonna grow as your data warehouse grows. Uh, but the compute that you're charged for a data warehouse could be uh, dependent on the seek frequency. You have to turn on a compute instance every time you call Fivetran to accept data from Fivetran and place it in, in the proper table. Uh, so what this organization is doing, this financial services company, is they're creating a dynamic schedule for that MySQL source that they're pushing into Snowflake. Uh, they're creating a dynamic schedule with Airflow. Uh, so uh, if you're calling 
five tran every five minutes or every five hours. It doesn't really matter on the five tran side, but it could influence your costs on, on the data warehouse side. They're dynamically creating a schedule where during business hours, they're syncing new data from their database to Snowflake every five minutes. Uh, but on nights and weekends outside of business hours, they are pushing that data to Snowflake every one to two hours. And with this simple change that they're implementing in Airflow, uh, they're able to realize a 20% reduction in their data warehousing costs. And there are a number of ancillary benefits that come here, right? The less frequently you're running data pipelines, the fewer opportunities there are for things to go wrong, um, the less power you're consuming. Uh, but the headline here is the uh, cost savings that they're able to realize um, uh, from, uh, from this uh, setup utilizing Fivetran and Airflow. Uh, so let's get into a little bit more about what's happening here at Fivetran. Uh, with Fivetran, you are uh, authenticating into a des data destination, a data warehouse or data lake um, where you would like data to go. And you are authenticating into the applications, databases, events, files, uh, or cloud functions that you would like to pull data from. And having Fivetran take care of the rest, uh, a fully managed service that is providing automatic data updates, providing automatic schema migrations, which is great for situations like Airflow. If you're managing many data pipelines in parallel, having that automatic schema migrations as something like say Salesforce adds a new data table or changes the data type of a particular, you know, data that's coming from uh, Salesforce, just having Fivetran automatically pick that up and propagate those changes through to your destination where you don't have broken DAGs where you're trying to trace which a source changed which table, changed which data type, uh, you know, just to change one line of code in your DAG, we are taking care of that for you. Providing item potent uh, data destinations where there are no uh, duplicate values or missing values uh, in your destination. Uh, performant data syncs via micro batch architecture. And as you saw in the case study, and you'll see again in the demonstration, it's very extensible, dynamic, and customizable with something like the Fivetran Airflow provider. That case study really highlighted a really unique and specific way that I've seen uh, organizations use Fivetran and Airflow together. Uh, I've been talking to many organizations that are using Fivetran and Airflow to orchestrate ELT, though. and. Uh, these are the three things uh, that I've really seen that show up consistently uh, for organizations that are using this combination of technologies that I wanted to share with you all. Uh, the first would be uh, the combination of Fivetran and Airflow enables you to synchronize your data syncs, right? Having that really fine control and awareness of when things happen in Airflow is beneficial and enables you to programmatically prioritize data syncs. Right, if you have something that is particularly valuable, uh, particularly long running job, you can have that happen, uh, have that hit your data warehouse or data lake there first or last or wherever you would like um, that data uh, sync to start. Really having fine control and awareness of when things are happening in your warehouse. Uh, and if you're using uh, Fivetran to get data there, you're inheriting all of those benefits of automated data ingestion that I mentioned on the previous slide automatic data updates, propagating those schema changes all the way down to your destination. Um, and this is really helping not just scale out your uh, scale out your DAGs and enabling you to focus more time, maybe building out new data pipelines instead of monitoring and maintaining old ones. I've really seen this particular point help with that uh, organizations that are building out that first data pipeline and airflow. Uh, you can really get started on step two if you're using uh, Fivetran, right? You already have all your data collected. It's where it's in the tables that you know which tables it in. It's in you know when it's hitting those tables. And you can continue on closer towards your end data products without having to know um, how to port existing data ingestion jobs maybe into an Airflow environment, how to call them with Python operators or Bash operators or what have you. Just um, being able to have that data where you want it, when you want it. This also enables the triggering of data transformations. And we'll see in the demonstration that it allows you to perform data transformations across data sources. 
uh, which is really interesting. Uh, I've seen a number of organizations that are performing transformations um, where they'll have their five trans jobs on a five trans schedule, their DBT jobs on or data transformation jobs on a DBT schedule, and to ensure that everything that their transformation needs is ready and updated in something like their data warehouse. They space those really far out, their five trend jobs and their DBT jobs temporarily. And that can lead to latency problems. We've even seen organizations run into SLA issues because these transformations are happening uh, so far off in the future after uh, five trend is finished. Uh, and the reason why organizations are spacing these transformations out so, so far is because the opposite problem is at least just as bad. Right, if transformations are happening too early, they can overlap with your data extraction and data load jobs. Uh, and that can cause missing data or integrity issues, which again, are at least just as bad. By using Fivetran and Airflow together, you can trigger the rest of your data pipeline after Fivetran, you know, the second that Fivetran is done. And we'll see that uh, in the demonstration. When I'm talking to organizations that are orchestrating ELT in, in Airflow, uh, the organization are not just doing ELT though in Airflow, right? There's data activities, there's data tasks that are happening both before data reaches five trend and after data is transformed by DVT. Airflow provides one uh, tool that they can manage all of these data tasks that comprise their data pipelines, which I've seen is really valuable uh, for the orchestrations I'm talking to that are orchestrating ELT. And this also facilitates you know, collaboration across different data teams, different data products. This last point, this data ops management that I'm seeing is really, you know, some general things that happen just in many airflow cases. But the first two, synchronizing data syncs and triggering transformations, I think that you're getting that's unique to that combination of Fivetran and Airflow and using them together. You can do so and orchestrate Fivetran and Airflow with the Fivetran Airflow provider. You can find the Fivetran Airflow provider on the Astronomer Registry. It's a deep library of standard patterns for tight integrations between Airflow and other tools in the modern data stack. If you go to registry.astronomer.io, it's really easy to find Fivetran from there in the Fivetran Airflow provider. You can see how you can bring it into your Airflow environment, uh, the modules that make up the Fivetran Airflow provider, and uh, some docu documentation on uh, how to run it. We can also take a look at all of that, you know, right here in the in the next couple slides. In the Fivetran Airflow provider, we have the Fivetran hook. Hooks in Airflow abstract away logic uh, from Airflow operators, so you can keep your Airflow operators like super lightweight and readable. Uh, and for the Fivetran hook, we're doing exactly that for for Fivetran. So abstracting away all of that logic, where uh, you know five. Airflow is authenticating with Fivetran. Airflow is ensuring that the data sync that you want to call and start in Fivetran actually exists. All of those things are abstracted away from you in Fivetran, in the Fivetran hook. And this is really an area that is for advanced users and use cases only. I wanted to highlight it for this audience because I think that uh, you know there may be some advanced users attending. And if you run through the Fivetran hook, if there's any functionality that you would like to see added or changed, uh, I'm certainly very open to accepting pull requests, accepting comments, accepting issues, proposals, what have you, and how we can continue to build out this provider. But for most of us, and what we'll see in the demonstration, uh, the focus is on the Fivetran operator and Fivetran sensor. In Airflow, an operator executes some sort of work, right? And the sensor waits for some sort of condition to be met. So if you're mapping those to data movement to ETL, um, the Fivetran operator and Fivetran sensor are pretty easy to make that leap into what they're doing. A Fivetran operator starts the execution of a Fivetran data sync. It'll call Fivetran and get it to start that data movement into your destination. A Fivetran sensor monitors the execution of a Fivetran data sync. Uh, so Often I'll see organizations, and I use it the same way, that will call a Fivetran operator and then immediately after a call a Fivetran sensor. Uh, so you can monitor the status of that data job that you've just started. Once the Fivetran sensor is done, you know that uh, your data has been Fivetraned into its destination, it's ready to go, and you can continue on with your data pipeline and working with that data, uh, and you know where it is uh, and that it's up to date. 
all of these operators, the Fivetran operator and Fivetran sensor, they're interfacing with Fivetran API. And I'm pointing that out because I've seen people replicate this functionality before the Fivetran provider. They were using uh, like pulling their data warehouse to see when Fivetran was done in Airflow. And I, I, it's just a lot easier experience, a lot simpler and, and better experience just to keep that in Fivetran. Uh, you'll see how uh, in the demonstration how easy it is to manipulate uh, data and manipulate your data pipelines with uh, the Fivetran operator and Fivetran sensor here. So in this demonstration, I'm going to be a data engineer that is preparing a pipeline for a marketing organization where they are buying advertisements across various ad platforms. And at the end, I want to be able to have one table where I have information about the ad spend, ad impressions, and ad clicks that these ads are generating across, um, across different ad platforms. So I'm gonna be using two uh, data sources that are pulling in ads data in this example. I'll be calling Fivetrain to move that data into a data warehouse. Um, and I'll be calling those, uh, starting those Fivetrain jobs with the Fivetrain operator uh, in Airflow. I'll be then using the Fivetran sensor to know the second that both of these jobs are done, I can move on with the rest of my data pipeline. I'm doing that uh, with a DBT operator that performs a data transformation. Uh, as soon as all the data that it needs is ready and available in the data warehouse, it's triggered and then I you know, continue with those transformations. The transformation that I'm doing in this demonstration comes from the ad reporting package. Uh, that you can find on Git or on hub.gitdbt.com. It was one that was contributed by some analysts here at Fivetran uh, that brings not just in this demonstration, you'll see ads data coming from LinkedIn and Twitter, uh, but you can also use this same package to aggregate data um, from Google ads, Facebook ads, Microsoft ads, and Pinterest ads as well, all, all um, aggregating them together into a single table. So let's check out that demonstration. Here you can see fivetrain.com and one of those data uh, connectors that I was mentioning. Uh, in this case, it would be, this is where I'm pulling in uh, ads that are coming, data about ads that are on Twitter. Uh, in my, my case, I'm taking the ads information coming from Twitter and pushing it to a BigQuery data warehouse. So I have the data source here is Twitter. The destination is BigQuery. And in Fivetran, we map those source destination pairings are called connectors. And you can see that they're all identified by something called a Fivetran connector ID. To be able to orchestrate this connection, this process of moving data from Twitter to BigQuery, to be able to orchestrate that in Airflow, it's just a matter of finding uh, this connector's Fivetran connector ID and pasting it into Airflow as an Airflow variable. So here you can see that same information. I've noted that this is my connector ID that's working with Twitter data. And then, you know, that's really all you need to be able to get this running out of Airflow. Here we can see that DAG that I've put together that has not just the Twitter data, but also LinkedIn data. I'm starting a five trend operator for each of them that kicks off that movement of data from these sources into BigQuery. Then immediately after I'm calling a Fivetran sensor for each that is uh, monitoring the execution of these Fivetran jobs. As data is coming from different sources in different amounts, these take a variable amount of time and I can use uh, Airflow to easily you know, halt the execution of everything else happening in a data pipeline until both of them are finished. I can see if you're looking in this black box, the sixth line from the top uh, is duration and I can see that this LinkedIn connector took 50 minutes to execute and finish putting all of the data in BigQuery and Twitter took 20 minutes to execute. So we're really waiting on this Twitter uh, sync to finish. You can see in the very bottom line here in this black box, it ends at 50 minutes and 27 seconds after midnight. Uh, one second later at 50 minutes and 28 seconds, my DBT job is running and I'm able to uh, trigger that transformation and move on with the rest of my data pipeline. If I take a look at the code to generate this DAG, it's you know as straightforward as you would imagine. I'm bringing in the operators from this five trend provider, the operator and the sensor, and then it's just two lines of code uh, for each connector. 
one, two, the operator to start it, sensor to, to wait until it's finished. And you can see where I'm also referencing that connector ID that I copy and pasted from fivetrend.com. Once I have those all in my DAG, it's really easy to configure what I would like this DAG to look like. So I have DBT waiting and I'm performing transformations uh, waiting until after uh, both of these connectors are done. It's just as easy to have DBT or some other transformation or something else happening after each of them are done. Whatever you would like, you know, you can still maintain that flexibility that you may be um, accustomed to in Airflow, right? And once again, you can find this provider at the Astronomer Registry. Uh, it will work with any five trans source, moving data to any five trans destination uh, with any Airflow version. Uh, if you would like to try out this uh, provider yourself, we are going to be uh, providing a hands-on workshop where we can get you set up with our friends at uh, Astronomer. Uh, and you can go to the number five, tran.co slash Airflow Summit, 5trend.co slash Airflow Summit, and find a way to sign up for a workshop where we'll get you set up with a 5trend account and a 5trend trial. With Astronomer, we'll get you set up with an Airflow instance and then utilizing this provider to easily or uh, build out a data pipeline and orchestrate ELT. I'm looking forward to that. That is two weeks from today. Uh, and that will be the inaugural event here for a new data ops online community that we just started. So if you would like to present at that or attend, you know, we would be looking for um, some cool topics to uh, talk about anything data ops there. If you would like to, um, you know, like to do that, like to attend or have any feedback or thoughts about the Fivetran Airflow provider or how you are orchestrating, uh, ELT and Fivetran, whether that's with, or ELT and Airflow, whether that's with or without Fivetran, uh, please let me know at nick.acosta at fivetran.com. Uh, and one more time, Leah, thanks again for having me. Uh, thanks Airflow Summit for having me. Uh, and best of luck, everyone, in, in orchestrating your ELT.